welcome to this how-to video by the English department. Today, we're going to be looking at paper two, question five, which will ask you to write in a persuasive or argumentative style, which is worth 40 marks, 24 for content and organization, and 16 for technical accuracy. It is the same mark scheme as paper one, question five. So you need to have the same standard of accurate and varied sentence structures and punctuation. Firstly, let's be clear about what the examiner is looking for. You'll be given a statement which will be controversial in some way. It will link by topic or by theme to the text that you've just read. This is last summer's statement. The bit underneath is important, but we'll come back to that later. You have two options when answering this question. You have waggles of both in the booklet that you add over half term. Some of you will be familiar with the imagine structure and some of you will be familiar with a knives extended metaphor. This video will follow Mr. Pell's imagine structure. Remember, all persuasive techniques and sentence structures are good regardless of which structure you follow. Your argument is like an inverted triangle. You start by engaging the reader and end with your message. If you do it the other way around, you'll run out of things to say and just ramble on. Think of a scale. You are going to either argue for, which is completely, unbelievably, totally agreeing with the statement, or against, which is completely, unbelievably, totally disagreeing with it. Don't do a bit of both. It's much more likely to go wrong and it's often rubbish. When deciding, just go with your gut feeling. You'll have more ideas and opinions. The following video will explain how to answer the question by following this structure. This is a structure designed to allow your writing to be creative while at the same time accurate. It should also allow you to reuse ideas from other pieces. You can only possibly be asked about so many topics. Here are the ones most likely to come up. Teenage life. Dangerous sports. Travel and exploration. Television. Recycling. Heroes and role models. Charity. An exercise. Statements in your exam will most likely have something to do with one of those topics. In theory, you could write yourself some waggle answers beforehand. Most of these categories will have an obvious for or against. No one is going to argue, for example, that recycling is bad, so you would only need to practice one side of the argument. Also, you could even rehearse sentence starters. The topic will change, but as you can see in front of you, not the structure of your sentence. Right. Back to last year's statement, it would fit nicely into the teenage life category. Remember, the more accuracy, the more marks. Six out of 16 is again unacceptable. If you follow the structure, you should end up with all manner of devices and techniques. Regardless of whether it says article, speech, blog, do the same thing. It will work just as well for all of them. However, do consider your audience. Young people will require a different tone of voice to those who would read a broadsheet newspaper. A forest is great. It is basic persuasive rising, but correctly executed, it's pretty much all that you need to do. If you don't know what any of these are, spend some time revising them separately. I'm presuming that you do, so I'll carry on. Don't use the pronoun I as no one cares about one person's opinion. Instead, use you, we, they, to create a bond and a group. No one likes to be weird. We all follow the herd. For example, which of these are more persuasive? I think Wayne Rooney is a waste of space. Wayne Rooney is a waste of space. Everyone knows Wayne Rooney is a waste of space. Removing I makes an opinion look like a fact. Step one. Planning. Do it around the statement. Like paper one, it will save you time and structure your answer. You'll do it like this. You'll have six lines that will roughly match up with six paragraphs. One, 
for or against. Two, imagine. Three, big picture. Four, local person. Five, message. And six, ending. Remember that inverted triangle? Yours looks like this. Your first paragraph will be descriptive and will hook the reader. You'll then have a rhetorical question on its own which ties your description to your argument. Your big picture will see you pick a country around the world and make up some believable lies to support your argument. A local person will bring you close to home before your message sums up your argument after all of the persuading has been done. Your ending should be one line featuring something catchy that sounds a bit like an advert. Your planning will look something like this. Decide first whether you are for or against. Remember the scale. Here, we're going to go against. So far against that we'll suggest parents need to be even more protective. Then, decide on your message. Otherwise, you won't know what you're arguing about. Link your message to human nature and society to make it sound like the problem is bigger than it is. Then, use your message to allow you to imagine the best or worst possible outcome if your argument isn't agreed with. That will form your descriptive opening. Your big picture is remember what's going on in other countries. Your local person is what's going on nearer to home. Remember, make it up, but make it believable. Your ending line is there just in case you have a moment of genius halfway through. It is really annoying when you forget a good line. Imagine your opening paragraph. If in doubt, after the first sentence, use exactly the same structure as paper one, question five. Three adjectives and a dash, three prepositions, two similes and a semicolon, and a metaphor. Get those spag marks in early. This paragraph should be about half a page in normal writing. Use it as a guide for the rest of the piece and the size of your following paragraphs. Your rhetorical question. This doesn't appear in the plan because you can do this yourself. Use the pronoun you and possibly some words from the statement. Use it to tie your descriptive opening to the rest of your argument. Your big picture. Use your forest here, alongside some lies that are untraceable. You don't know what the statement will be, so you can't be expected to know actual facts about everything. Your quality lies will form your facts, which you will then use alongside opinions and statistics. If you want, create an expert. We could have had the Swedish Minister for Child Safety, for example. Have them back up the things that you are actually trying to say. Local person. This is the equivalent of the random people who appear on the news after some kind of petty crime has taken place. Notice how now your argument is getting close to home, more focused, more specific. Go extreme. Use emotive language and either make them incredibly sympathetic or ridiculously stupid, whichever suits your argument. Again, plenty of a forest and a quote from your local person. Now we get to your message. Turn your original notes into a paragraph. Go back to the words in the statement. Twist them to suit your argument. Your ending should be a one sentence paragraph. Use the words from the statement and try and cram in a bit of alliteration so it's memorable. Don't miss it off as your argument won't seem finished and you'll lose some organisational marks. It's also a good idea to reuse some words or imagery from your opening paragraph. It shows you've thought about what you're doing and it's pretty easily done. When you're done, you'll have a piece that looks something like this. Pause it and have a read. A good revision idea is to spot the clever things that we set out to do. You could find all of these in the waggle and see how they are actually used. Any questions, direct them to your class teacher or to me. Good luck.